Stay tuned today as we go through some of the unique, modified, or mission-adapted guns used by MACV SOG. If you've never heard of MACV SOG, let's give you a brief description of this one's secret unit. MACV SOG stands for Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studies and Observation Group. This organization was started in 1964 and was tasked with scouting and reporting enemy movements and positions. This was part of their mission. They performed along with other operations, including taking high value targets or neutralizing them, along with sabotage and direct action. The group was composed of Army Special Forces, CIA, Marine Force Recon, Navy SEALs, and as the war went on, others were also brought on. They also worked with Vietnamese, Montagnards, Cambodians, or ethnic Chinese, and they performed missions into North Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and throughout South Vietnam. Go grab that drink and get ready to learn about the weapons used by MACV SOG. Starting off, we have the Carl Gustav M45, and this weapon was also called the Swedish K. This submachine gun fires a 9mm round as an open bolt, simple blowback design. It was developed around 1944. The gun fires fully automatic only, and it comes with a 36 round magazine. In Sweden, it was used until 2007, mainly with their home guard units. SOG operators liked the simplicity of it, lending to its reliability, and the compact full auto fire it offered. This weapon was very effective in close quarter battles. The Navy SEALs also liked the weapon because it could be used very quickly out of the water. Sweden embargoed weapons to the United States during the war. The gun was copied by Smith & Wesson as the M76 and the weapon continued to be used by SOG and others. The Swedish K and M76 were also fitted with a custom made suppressor for certain missions. The M3 Grease Gun Used in World War II mainly by the United States Armed Forces, it was brought into service in 1943. The weapon fires the 45 ACP round and has a 30 or 32 round magazine. A variant model was made in 1944 called the M3A1, which improved on several issues of the original model. Around 1,000 were made with an integral suppressor for use by the OSS, or Office of Strategic Services, and it was designed by Bell Laboratories. SOG liked the reliability of its open bolt blowback design and found the 45 caliber round was devastating to its targets. Several sources state that the grease gun was used with a suppressor on several missions carried out by SOG. The M3 was officially taken out of service by the Army in 1959, but continued to see use in the Army until the early 1990s as a gun for tank crews and others. Interesting note, the M3 was also used by Delta Force when they were first formed. Moving on, we got the AK-47. The weapon was mass produced by not only the USSR, but also China along with many other Warsaw Pact countries. The weapon fires a 762 by 39 millimeter round and it has a 30 round magazine. The AK can fire either semi or full auto. This weapon was the main rifle used by the North Vietnamese Army or the NVA and the Viet Cong. The weapon is simple to operate, easy to maintain and its round is very effective, especially at close ranges. Most SOG engagements with the enemy happened at close range, and the AK-47, with its automatic fire, was an effective and deadly weapon. SOG used the AK-47 along with its members often dressed in Viet Cong clothing to confuse the enemy and to provide them with a tactical advantage. Another advantage for SOG using the AK-47 was the ability to use magazines from eliminated enemies, giving them more ammunition if needed. Don't forget to leave in the comments if you knew that MACV SOG was using these weapons or if you knew any other unique or highly modified weapons that they used. Moving on, we got the Gyrojet Pistol. This was developed in the 1960s. The pistol fired either a 12 or a 13 millimeter rocket instead of a conventional bullet. The projectiles at first fired very slow compared to regular ammunition, but with development, it achieved a max FPS of 1250. The pistol was expensive along with the rocket rounds. For SOG, it offered several advantages such as lightweight and little recoil, but it also held several disadvantages such as 
questionable reliability and accuracy was not on par with other conventional weapons. This weapon gained fame in several movies and TV shows, including the James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice. The Uzi submachine gun developed in the 1950s and brought into service with the IDF, or the Israeli Defense Force, around 1954 to 1956. The weapon uses a bolt design, allowing the magazine of the gun to be loaded through the pistol grip. It has a magazine capacity of 25 rounds of 9mm and was also developed in other calibers such as 45 ACP and even 22. The SOG teams also used the Uzi with a suppressor. It was discovered that suppressed weapons like the Uzi and others in 9mm sometimes were not as effective as other calibers. SOG acquired the Uzi from the CIA who in turn got the weapons from FNN in Belgium. Many SOG operators liked the Uzi for its compactness and easy loading of the magazine. The compactness of the Uzi also made it a favorite when SOG had to be inserted by parachute drop. Now on to the M60 machine gun. The M60 machine gun was a widely used machine gun in the Vietnam War. It fired a 762 by 51 millimeter round and was belt fed. Many of its design features were taken from the German MG42 and its variant models. The M60 was modified with a shorter barrel and lost weight in the process. At China Lake Naval Weapons Center, a special M60 was created and dubbed the Death Machine. The Death Machine was a chopped and lightened M60 with a 500 round drum type magazine placed into a backpack and fed into the weapon with an aircraft type feed belt. This extreme machine gun platform weighed almost 90 pounds, requiring a Rambo-like operator to wield it. Moving down the list, we have the Browning High Power Pistol. The 9mm Browning High Power was a 13 round semi-automatic single action pistol. It was developed by John Moses Browning and was first manufactured by FN in Belgium. The weapon was a favorite of both the Allied and Axis troops of World War II. This weapon was favored by SOG for its reliability and increased round capacity, especially over the 1911, which was standard issue to US troops. One of the advantages of this and many of the other weapons used by SOG is that they were non-US issued weapons and some were sterile or clean of any serial numbers or other markings. This gave the US military deniability in case the operators were either captured or found by the enemy, especially when they were in other countries such as Laos and Cambodia. Down the line, we have the XM-177. XM-177 was often nicknamed the CAR-15 by many of its users and given the designation of GAU-5 by the Air Force. It was developed by Colt as a shorter version of the M16. The XM-177 had a 10.5 inch barrel and a retractable stock. The XM-177 fired the same round as the M16, which is 5.56 millimeter, and was mainly fed by a 20 round magazine. This weapon quickly became a favorite of SOG and the Green Berets. It provided a compact rifle able to provide decent stopping firepower for SOG operators. Another advantage of the XM-177 platform and even the M16 was that the operators could carry more ammo on missions. Since SOG operations were mainly behind enemy lines, when the enemy was engaged, they needed to be able to provide as much firepower as possible from every man on the team. They often had no air or artillery support, and when being extracted from a mission, they often had to wait under enemy fire. SOG operators were often seen using a canteen pouch to also hold more XM-177 and M16 magazines than the regular issued magazine pouches. Now let's move on to the Thumper, the M79 grenade launcher. M79 is a 40 millimeter grenade launcher that fired different types of rounds including high explosive and smoke. 
this weapon entered service in 1961 with the U.S. military and gave the infantry more firepower and a reloadable weapon system. As the M79 was widely used in Vietnam, it was adapted by SOG and sometimes modified by their operators for certain missions. SOG often cut down the barrel and chopped the stock. This was not only to save weight, but also made the weapon more compact to carry along with other weapons. Later in the war, the M203 began to see service by SOG. The advantage of the M203 was that it provided the firepower of the M79, but was also mounted under the XM177 or the M16. Moving on to my favorite, the RPD machine gun. This weapon fires the same round as the AK-47, which is 762 by 39. The RPD is a belt-fed machine gun with a 100-round drum. SOG modified the capacity to 125 rounds. One of the first things SOG did was make this weapon more compact by cutting down its barrel and shortening the stock. SOG operators spoke highly of this weapon, some stating you could control this weapon so well you could write your name with it. As with many of the weapons used, the RPD was a tough and reliable weapon. It was favored by SOG because at close ranges, it was very effective at providing suppressive fire when needed. Another advantage of the RPD was the effectiveness of the 762 by 39 millimeter round. It was very deadly to those who were in its range. The weapon was said to have influenced the development of the M249 saw and other squad automatic weapons. SOG showed the effectiveness of using special operation forces along with intelligence agencies to acquire information and limit an enemy's influence in a unconventional war. More important than the weapons they used was the bravery and the commitment to complete the mission. These men often found themselves behind enemy lines with little to no support, and they knew most of their missions could be their last. As proof of this, SOG operators obtained 12 Medals of Honor and a reputation for taking on what most would call a suicide mission without hesitation. In the comments, let me know if you know of any other weapons that MACV SOG used that were unique or non-standard issue. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This really helps the channel. This gives me an idea of the kind of content that you, my viewers, want to see. And lastly, don't forget to check the links in the description.